Good morning or good afternoon, depending where you are. Um, we're just waiting for more attendees to join. And uh, we'll start the meeting shortly. All right, we'll just give everybody another minute to join in. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Unlocking Financial Efficiency. Um, in today's webinar, we are going to cover managing expenses and purchase orders in Function Point. Today, uh, I will be hosting. I'm Gil Daniels, and I have my partner in crime over here, Jess Bird, and uh, we will be presenting. Um, the topic we just uh, mentioned here, and uh, we're here to answer questions as well. Morning, everybody. So for today's agenda, we are going to cover adding expenses into your job through um, adding it to an existing or a new estimate. Um, we are going to create an expense purchase order, and then we are going to um, show you how when the invoice comes in and uh, how you would record that. And then afterwards, we are going to uh, show uh, how to reconcile those POs that you issued. Um, and uh, for those of you that maybe use bill.com, we will show you how to um, batch uh, upload a bunch of expenses into function point using the upload tool and at the end uh, we are going to show you using bi reporting how you can gain insights and track and analyze your expenses effectively and jess will be showing that so uh, we have a little poll here we just want to get an idea of, uh, from everybody uh, your experience as far as expense tracking. So if everybody can uh, take a moment to answer. Just wanna get an idea of um, the experience everybody has. Uh, they're just trickling in here so we've got 85 percent of people have voted um let's just give people a couple more seconds if you haven't had a chance to get your votes in okay so it looks like a split there 
Okay, so um, I have over here a sample estimate um, that doesn't have expenses uh, entered in the system. So I'm just going to show you how you would add them. You would simply, in this particular case, go to the service group media for this example, and we'd hit the plus over here. And then I'm going to scroll down to our external expenses. So in this particular example, I'm going to just pick a couple here. Maybe we have media broadcast and media online, and I'm going to hit add. And just a quick quick tip too, uh, when you click on that plus sign, if you don't want to look at any of those internal services, there's a little arrow there that you can just collapse all those internal services. So up, uh, no, Gail, up where the service group is under the media. So if you click on the plus sign. Yep. Nope, one above, yep. Then you can just click on that little arrow there, so then you can just easily find your expenses. Awesome, thank you. And let's also mention when we're finished this, like how to add it if, if the expense you want to add isn't actually part of media, how you can enter an expense with an entirely new service group as well. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so over here, uh, we have our media broadcast. Maybe we're estimating uh, an expense of uh, $2,000 here. So we'll just add that. Um, here, the default markup on media broadcast from the rate card that was used in this estimate is 15%. Maybe you want to mark it up 30%. So you would do that. And you'll notice over here, it's showing the cost is 2000 and the portion to the client um, in the estimate would be 2600 Again, I'll put another one here. And maybe we want like a flat rate. We're going to double this. We don't know the percentage. We can just simply override it here and put 2000. Once that is done, we can save it. And uh, we can go to our job financials. So we would go to the job details over here and we would go to the financials. And you will see now we have our media um, buying internal services, which has some track time against it. And below we have the external expenses that we added. And we can see that we're estimating 2,600 over here and 2,000 over here for the expense. Um, is there any questions so far? And if there are any questions, there's a little question button at the top of the screen. You're welcome to submit questions as we go and I'm happy to answer them. And if there's something that's coming up, like the majority of people are having the same types of questions, then I can ask Gil to demonstrate. Okay, perfect. So we have our expenses here in the financials, and um, now we want to issue some POs. So there are two ways you can issue a PO. Um, the first way is um, adding it from the job. So uh, simply we're in the job right now, we can go add new, and we would go to add external expense. And this will bring you um, to our expense uh, page here where you would uh, enter the information. So the first thing I want to do is select my vendor. Um, as you know, in Function Point, anything with a blue line in the field is a required field in order to hit save or proceed. So we're going to select the vendor over here. This description area here could be used for your own internal info about the expense. You could add, uh, enter that there for whoever has access to this to view. Um, you can select terms. There is a pre-populated term over here. If you go to the list management section in the admin panel, you can uh, have some other PO uh, disclaimers customized for your PO that you can add in there. And uh, over here, we have uh, the job pre-populating because we launched it from the job. Now we have to select the service group. So when I hit this, because we had media uh, in the actual job and the estimate, it's automatically pulling the media over here. And then you would select the expense type. So if we go down here and we scroll down to media, you'll notice that we have the two media, the broadcast and the online. Um, it's showing you that we had estimated $2,600 for that. So I'm gonna select that one for an example. And uh, I'm going to issue a PO for 2600 to our vendor over here. And over here in this description field, you can um, enter whatever information you want the vendor to see.
Once you uh, have completed that, you can save this. And you can print the PO and send it out to the vendor. You'll see that uh, whatever information you put there would be there, and you're issuing a PO for $2,600. The second way of entering a PO, you can do through the um, financials, the job financials. So if I go back to this job over here and I go to the financials, you'll see um, the, the last PO I entered. If we drop down the media bar broadcast, you'll see we've issued PO 104. And um, there's a red zero here because we didn't enter the vendor invoice information. It's letting you know that there is some costs in the pipeline that are going to uh, come down uh, in the road that um, you'll need to update on the job once you get the vendor invoice. Um, but uh, I'm going to go here and proceed to how to enter the um, PO from the financials. This is my favorite way of doing it. If you actually click the plus over here, it's going to bring you to the same uh, PO entry page. The reason why I like it is it's taken all the information. I don't have to guess or figure out what uh, service group and expense, it pre-populates it over here. So again, we're going to pick a vendor. I'm just going to find a vendor there. Um, and we're going to quote it for $1,000. And we'll just put uh, whatever um, you want to put here. Uh, uh, radio broadcast, whatever you want um, to indicate to the vendor. And again, you'll save it and uh, you can print it like uh, we did the last one and it'll show over here. Now, if there is multiple lines, um, maybe you have uh, additional things you want to add. Um, you can simply click the add line button here and it'll bring up another line for that vendor. You can indicate the job it's for and so forth and complete it. Is there any questions so far? Uh, we just had one individual that was having a hard time hearing, but they've uh, joined the phone now, so that's great. Um, and then uh, somebody's asking about if we can go through the cost versus actual sections. So uh, basically, you know, when you get the vendor invoice, how that compares to what you potentially estimated and what you're actually going to bill to the client. Okay, so... Um... I'm going to go, so uh, that's basically at the stage once you get the invoice, right? They're asking? Yeah, so like we want to know the difference between the cost and the actuals, right? So we're estimating a certain amount and then what does it end up being our cost? So just for future reference, Gil get, we'll get into reconciling that expense so that you'll be able to see the estimated versus cost versus actuals. Yeah, so... Um, over here, we can see on the financials, it's been estimated. Um, now what we're going to do is uh, um, add the vendor invoice. So we're going to pretend we got an invoice from the uh, vendor. And um, we're going to pull it from the financials. You can access it directly, uh, the expense page from the financials here. Or you can search that PO number up by doing a search. Um, but for simplicity purposes, I'm going to go over here. We're going to click on this, and now we've got the vendor invoice, so we're going to edit this expense entry. We're going to put an invoice number or a reference number that they provided, and now we are going to update the actuals. So over here is what you would enter the what the vendor um, invoice says. So we would enter one, for example, here, and let's say that they only invoiced us um, two thousand dollars instead of twenty six hundred dollars. We would enter that here. Now you'll see it's carried over um, to what's going to be billed to the client, the expense if you're going to bill them for that, with the markup of thirty percent. Um, now, if you quoted the um, client for higher than 2,600, you can simply just override it. Just because the expense came in lower than what you quoted them, um, you can actually override it here. So if it was 3,000, you would just enter 3,000 here. I'm gonna just hit save. 
And uh, at this point, um, once you have the vendor invoice recorded in the system, you can simply export if you have QuickBooks integration um, over here, you can click that and it will send the information of the invoice over to QuickBooks and create an AP entry for the, um, for the invoice and your accounting team to uh, disperse the payment. Now, um, you might want to attach a, a sample of the invoice. You can simply just click Upload File over here, and uh, you can put a description of that invoice, and uh, we can just put Invoice 555, for example, and then you can just hit click up here to upload a file. I have a sample invoice that I've already created, and we would hit Open. And you'll see that the invoice here is um, attached to this purchase order entry. So I'm going to hit done over here. Um, if you wanted to view it, there's a link here. You can view that invoice. And uh, you have that on record. Now, um, I get asked quite often, will this information uh, get passed on to QuickBooks as well? The attachment, it does not. So your accounting team would probably have to upload that separately if they wanted to have that record in their system as well. But for um, if you wanted uh, transparency here in Function Point, you can definitely upload the invoice here for your records. Is there any questions before I proceed? Uh, um, yes, well, there's a question about what, what do you have to do if you have to revise the PO later? Will it be a revision one? So if you have to revise the PO, it's not going to yeah. actually track your changes. So if you're going in and changing, like, I guess it also depends on what kind of revisions you're talking about. If it's revising the, like, quoted for amount versus, um, you know, what the actual vendor invoice came in as. And I guess while, when you're doing it, that is also going to make a difference. Right. Um, but it won't track like a, like an estimate that you have in a pre no. steps if that's what they're asking. No, it won't. But you can simply go back, edit it. And uh, so let's revise this. Let's say it was 2600. Um, and then uh, we can um, put it with the markup here instead. You can just simply uh, save it and uh, you can re-upload a new image, say the vendor uh, gave you the wrong invoice and you want to replace it, you can simply delete it and up upload a new um, uh, invoice for your records. Um, so I wanted to get back to uh, showing how that looks on the financials to answer that previous question about uh, actuals versus um, estimated. Uh, so basically you can just go back to the job over here and we go to the financials. And now we will see that uh, for media broadcast, we estimated 2,600, the actual cost was 2,600, and uh, this is the portion that the client is going to pay. Any questions so far? Yeah, there's a few coming through the chat that I'm just answering right now, but you can continue. Um, perfect, so... Uh, The next thing that we have to cover, you can uh, also add um, for the next uh, expense that comes in, you can also add it from here. Or like I said, you can look for that PO number 105. And then you can simply go into that and uh, record your invoice as well. You would just simply hit edit. Remember to put the reference number. It's not a required field, but you want to put the reference number in there. And uh, then you would just simply record what that expense is. And uh, if the markup is correct, then you can just hit save. Now, when I go to the financials, I can see that both these expenses have been updated. Um, any questions? Um, someone's asking if we can lock POs from being edited by staff after they've been invoiced to a client. Uh, so that might be a permissions thing. I'll have to look into that. 
we'd have to follow up. It uh, definitely might be um, an option there. Usually there is for most of the other modules. So um, we'll follow up with that one and, and check. Okay, so we're probably wondering how we can keep track of all these POs that we issued and what stage we're at. So what I did here was I created, um, using the find routine, I created a little search here uh, ahead of time. Uh, I called it expense reconciliation. Um, basically, you can create filters here, so I did that ahead of time. And uh, I'm just picking some um, expenses that are greater than January 1st, 2024, so that uh, for simplicity purposes, I only show you a few POs in this report. So when we look at this report here, um, we can see this particular uh, estimate um, has a quoted amount, um, but we haven't received the vendor invoice. How we know that is a it's not posted and um, the billable amount is not showing up. Over here we have another estimate that was done um, and the expense was billed to the client. So we know that it's been billed because we have a check mark over here and we can see the amount that was invoiced to the client and when it was invoiced and we also see that that expense was posted. So this is a great way to keep track of all the POs that you've issued and uh, what status they are in. And of course you can access those POs on the fly from this report. Do we have any questions? Yes, lots. I'm working through them, so patience for the people on the phone. Um, they're not specifically related to what you're doing, Gil. They're just more like above and beyond questions. Okay. Um, so, yes, and we're going to get to the related reports shortly. And then someone's always asking, how did you add the invoice document to the expense? So can you just review one more time how you Sure, did that? yeah, no problem. Great. Um question. Um, I will go back to this one. Uh, since we're on this report and in the search, you can access it through the links over here. So how you add the actual invoice, you can just simply click the plus over here. It shows you upload the file. And again, you can um, select what folder uh, in your job that you want it to go under if you have different folders that you're organizing. You can uh, put a reference number here, invoice number 123456. You can drag or drop the files if you have them on your desktop, or you can just simply click the upload a file and um, wherever you have that document um, scanned or saved from an email, perhaps, you can just select it and hit open. And you'll hit done. Um, if we go to the job and you want to see that invoice and you don't want to go from the expense page, you can actually see it here. You'll see that files is lit up on your tabs here under the job. And uh, you'll see over here your sample invoice to refer to. Or if anybody else on the team wants to see the invoice, they can simply uh, access it there if they have permissions to do so. Um, Gil, one other thing you could comment on is um, how you created the filter for the find routines. Sure, yeah, I figured um, I'd get to ask that. So um, the filter for the find routine, basically you put your search parameters in. Um, so in my particular case, I put um, this uh, expense date. I wanted everything greater to or equal to January 1st, 2024. Um, if it's your first time and you're just putting the parameter and you don't have a filter created, this won't show up here, but what you would do is you'd click the filter settings. You'll see that it's lit up now that I've entered um, some search criteria. You just simply click that. You're going to give it a name and uh, you would save it. Now, um, I also uh, manage the columns on this search. So if we go over here, um, I selected the different things that I wanted here so that I could reconcile. So definitely you, what you would do is you would click the manage columns over here and you can select the different items that you wanna see and you can shift things around. So um, 
I did probably have like billable at after status and so forth. Um, basically, you can organize it the way you want. So if you wanted invoice date before the invoice amount, you can put that here. Um, if you want the um, any of these things, they can move around to where you want to position them. And then I just saved the columns. So I brought in all the information on that search that I wanted to see and summarize in there. Um, and when I went to the find routine over here, when I created that filter, what you got to uh, remember to do is you're going to hit edit column settings. And those things that you um, selected for that search, you want to save them. And you have the option to make it a public filter. So if this search is something that you think other members of your team can um, utilize, you can put that here and it'll show up in their dropdown. But if you don't, it's going to just show up in your dropdown for your login. Does anybody else have any questions regarding that? Or are there any further questions about that? Oh, I think we're good there. Okay. There's a lot of questions around um, being able to recognize when a vendor invoice has been paid. So for those of you that are integrated with QuickBooks, that information will show in QuickBooks, but it does not push back into function points. So we can't tell when you've then gone ahead and paid that vendor. Um, it's a good idea, and that's something that, you know, uh, I know we're planning to do some uh, enhancements to the QuickBooks integration, so I'll definitely mention that to the product team. But currently, like, when an in a vendor invoice has been received by us as the company, we're going to go in and reconcile it against that expense. But then there's no way for Function Point to uh, know just through an integration that you've then gone ahead and paid that vendor. But that's a great question, and we'll certainly take that away to our product team. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, there's a, a couple of the folks on the line are my clients, so I'm just going to offer them a call to go through some of their questions. Um, so therefore, you know, we can spend some more one-on-one -on -one time. Um, I'm just trying to go through. Um, Oh, somebody else is asking how you added the invoice document to the expense. Um, sure. Uh, I'll just recap that one more time quickly. Um, da, 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 da. I think it was that one. Uh, basically, you go to that expense form. And you would just simply click the plus at the bottom. This won't show up until you, if you're entering all this information, you won't have that plus show up until after you save it. Um, so you have to enter the vendor uh, invoice information and um, your uh, what you're going to charge the customer. Then you're going to save it, and then that plus should show up, and then you would be able to upload that document. Okay, um, the other topic that I had is the external expense upload tool. Um, I have an article over here. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail because it would take a little while, but um, I'm just going to copy the link for it for those of you who are interested and put it in our chat. If, and uh, that way you guys have reference to that in the future. Um, but basically, in order to enable that, you do, if you have admin access or whoever has admin access, you do have to go into the staff permissions and make sure that expense import, um, which allows staff to import expenses via a CSV, is enabled. So you'd have to have that check, uh, checked off. Um, so in my particular system, I do have that enabled, and I just wanted to show you where you would access that and how you would be able to... Um, import your expenses. So I have clients that uh, integrate with bill.com on their QuickBooks and then it all goes in QuickBooks and they manage, manage the expenses there, but we still want to bring over those expenses into Function Point. Um, so this is a quick and easy way um, to have those added into Function Point. So if that um, permission is enabled, you're going to see this import expenses show up on this menu. 
If it's not enabled, this will not show. So we're going to click the import expenses over here. And um, over here, step one is to download your expense form. So whoever is going to update the batch is going to click the download. And that will create a, a template for you in Excel. And I'll just bring that over here. Um, and it pre-populates all the information that you need to update for your expenses. Now, um, you don't have to have all of the uh, fields filled in. Um, the ones that you are required to at minimum would be the supplier, the job, the expense type, and uh, those are what are required. When you do put the supplier, you will get some errors back if you're a character off on your supplier name. So make sure it matches what's in function point um, as far as the supplier name there. You'd fill it in um, all the different entries that you have. Uh, if you're doing it routinely, it could be for the week. And once this is completed, you would save it and you would go over here on step two, you will choose that saved file and then you can um, upload it into it'll you select it and then you click upload and it will bring all your expenses into function point now one thing i wanted to uh, um, uh, remind everybody of when you do it this way it's assuming that you've already recorded the uh expense in quickbooks if you are integrated so when you import it it is going to show as manually exported in uh, function point if you don't want it to do that, you would just simply put a zero here um, so that the system knows on that line for each line that you enter. So the system knows that uh, it is um, not manually exported and that you need to um, take care of that. Any questions with regards to uh, importing your expenses into Function Point? Uh, not yet. I'm still working on one question, but um, that's something we'll definitely, you know, uh, Richard, Richard, sorry, Gil, if you could put the link to that in the chat so that people can It is in the chat. Yep. Um, so uh, if everybody can, who is interested, uh, you can just simply download it or you can um, just search external expense import function from the help menu and function point. And uh, that article is there. And certainly reach out to your CSM uh, for further information or if you need a little help um, and guidance going through that. If you don't know who your CSM is, just send an email to support at functionpoint.com and one of our support team members will um, look up what your assigned CSM is and uh, connect you to them. And that basically covers how to uh, import expenses if you have uh, batches of expenses that you want to put in function point because you are taking care of them separately in QuickBooks, for example. So we have about uh, 11 minutes left. Um, the last thing that we wanted to cover is some BI reporting that, to help you manage your expenses. And um, if Jess, you're ready, or if you're still answering questions, we can wait a, a minute, but um, Jess is gonna do a little presentation on that for us. Yes, one second. So there's um, a lot of questions, a lot of interest in the import tool. So that might be something that we wanna do a, a quick video on or something for them in the future. But um, for those of you that I know, that I've been chatting with, that we work together, uh, just shoot me an email. And if you guys want me to walk you through that process, by all means, um, otherwise, like you said, if, if you're not aware of who your CSM here is at Function Point, just email the support team and they'll put you in touch with somebody. Um, a lot of great questions coming through and I'm, I'm trying my best. So if I'm not answering your question correctly and you know me personally, just send me an email and say, okay, Jess, sort me out. Um, okay, give me one second here. And no I'm worries. And that's the same for me. If any of my clients are on, um, you're more than welcome to email me directly as well and um, I can help you through that. Okay, give me one second, and I'm just going to share my screen. Perfect, so everybody able to see my screen okay? So Gil, you'll be on question duty now. Um, so this report here is what I created out of the BI. So for those of you who have the premium BI, you get access to reports such as pivot grids and bar graphs and things like that. I'll swap it back to the table just 
for kind of, you know, basic information. What I'm looking at here is I'm trying to determine, okay, for the companies I work with and the specific jobs, what expenses do I have? What have I estimated for my cost? What's my estimated billable? So that's going to be, I estimate that uh, I'm going to, my cost to back to the vendor is going to be $200, but I'm going to bill the client for $240. Then my actual cost comes in at $200 and my actual billable is $240. So if we look at that in kind of very simple terms, then that means we've kind of made 40 bucks on that, right? Um, I'm just going to switch it back to the pivot grid to just kind of show you in a little more information. Now, what I've done is I've taken what the expense is first and foremost, and in the BI reports, you can reorganize it too. If you want to look at something from job specific, you can do it that way. Um, but what I put in here is the estimated billable or estimated cost or actual billable and our actual cost. You can still add things like invoiced amount if you also want to see if that's been invoiced. Um, so we can put invoiced amount and invoiced hours if we're wanting to track that. So we can add that information into our report. Oh, let's see. It did not want to go. There we go. So then we can see how many. Now, when we talk a little bit about invoicing hours versus invoiced amount, so sometimes people are like, okay, well, this cost um, came in at the end of the month and I actually don't want to bill it for that. So sometimes you might see zero for that invoiced amount, run the report the next month and then it's been invoiced. But it's essentially how you're not going to see a lot of hours when we're talking about maybe copywriting in Facebook. But if we're having somebody that um, a freelancer quoted us like, you know, 10 hours at a rate of $100, that quantity and rate, that's going to show us those hours when we're putting that in. Okay. Um, but mostly when it comes to expenses, it's really just what we were able to invoice for that expense. Um, any questions coming in about the reports? Uh, just going through here quickly. Like when we look at this and I expand it, I can see for this specific job, there was a copywriting expense, right? Uh, that's the company name. We can also put in another report that I have, you can actually pull in the supplier vendor information as well. Um, so essentially what I would suggest to people that this is one that you could build. I will go back and show you a different one. And then this one here, let's see. And this one here, I put it in for supplier vendor, right? So then I can see the company name. I'll actually just put the expense name here. And I've just basically said in this one, this is what my billable amount is. I'm just going to take the company name out of there to simplify this a little bit. Sorry if I'm making you guys seasick. Um, I can also like if I go expand all, it'll bring me all the information. So for Blue Line Digital, there's uh, we've got for this specific job, there's a creative. For this um, other job, we've got media broadcast. Blue Line Digital is very busy. So we're being able to see what the sum billable amount is. We can also pull in other information, so actual external expense. We can pull in the PO number, add that to the rows. Uh, we can see, let's see, where is the expense name? We can pull in all kinds of different types of information. Um, so essentially, you want to be able to kind of figure out what are you trying to access from these reports? Are you trying to see what POs have been reconciled, if you're trying to see what POs, um, you know, are outstanding in terms of, because I know some agencies too will create three separate POs for, let's say, a copywriter, and then they end up picking one out of the three that they've, you know, kind of solicited business from, and then they'll just go back in and remove those other two POs from the system. Um, again, when it comes to reporting, depending on the, the whether you have premium BI or the basic BI reports, um, there's a lot of information you can kind of pull in and you can navigate, um, you know, rejig. There's plenty of things that you can use for filtering. So if I'm looking just specific for a specific vendor, I can come in and I just want to see everything that's I've got outstanding for Blue Line Digital. Then again, if I go to the supplier vendor, move that up to the top, that's going to tell me everything I have in the system for them. Um, any questions, Gil, on relating to reports? Yeah, um, this is one that you've built, um, but someone's asking, is there a basic BI report name that I can grab or do I have to start from scratch? So what is, what's going to happen is if we go back to select new reports, 
when you're in there, if you look down here, there's the expense data report, there's external expense data report. Uh, some other reports that are going to pull in expense information is a lot of people like these um, estimated versus uh, actuals and invoiced. And then also the job summary report gives you like a nice overall picture. But when you click onto these basic reports, your first step is kind of to identify what fields you want to see. So the ones that are grayed out are going to say, well, we're, we're going to force you to see that information whether you want to or not, which is why it's nice to have the pivot grid. But then you can start pulling in. Maybe you don't care about the service group that it's allocated to. Um, maybe you want to see what the invoice date is. So you can make some of these you know, pre-judgments before you get in there, scroll through other. Maybe you don't care about all of this. But then once you have that information, you can also like rename the column. So if estimated cost is, doesn't really resonate with you, you can rename the columns. Um, you know, you can drag and drop into like, if you want company to come over here or whatever. Um, and then if you do have the premium BI, once you build them, you're able to save them and you're able to share them. So if you build a report that you think would be really, you know, great for uh, your team to see, or even if you have those like kind of weekly status meetings, uh, whether it be from a project management perspective or, uh, you know, a financials perspective, you can run these reports on a weekly basis and it'll give you the most updated information. Perfect. Um, and there have... is a big uh, BI report guide that we have um, that if anybody's interested, let us know. And then um, we can definitely send that out to you. It's a beast. I'll warn you right now. It's quite big, but it, and it's quite detailed in terms of like if you're looking for certain things, here's the report that it'll direct you to and it'll tell you what the available fields are. Awesome. Um, further to that, what I like to do is uh, when I open that document, I hit, hit control find. Uh, that's on IBM. I'm not sure what it is on Mac, but um, you use your find function and type the uh, data point that you're looking for to have in your report. And it'll show you all the different um, reports that have that data point that you're looking for that you can pull into the report. Um, just going back to another question, I think there was a job 30233 on your example, Jess. Yeah. Um, and the person saying um, job number 30233 has more sub jobs, how to pull a report for that job, including the sub job report. So there wouldn't be sub jobs per se, but let me just share my screen again. Um, so when, if we're looking at this specific report, like these, these are all the same job. If you notice the numbers all the same, but if you want to filter by one specific job, you can, so you can see all the jobs in your system and, and then three, I can just confirm that and see all the information specific to that, but they're not sub jobs. Exactly. When you're looking at it from a pivot table perspective, and let me just go back one of the saved ones um, I've just kind of filtered it so I only want to see the copywriting the Facebook the freelancer that type of thing but there, this is just telling me how many jobs are in the freelancer if I look at this and I open this up this is just telling me what expenses I have did that answer your question uh, just waiting to see if you been Yep, he says, okay, got it. Okay, like when you, like, we are gonna be doing some um, kind of rejigging of the project management tool. So things like task drawers and things like that'll come out. But currently, whenever we think of sub jobs, it's really that campaign hierarchy with multiple jobs representing the deliverables of that campaign, um, which we can also build into reports too, so you can see all that information. So definitely if, you, if you've got access to the, the BI reports or even just the standard reports, um, reach out to your CSM and we can help you build some stuff that, um, you know, you'll be able to use on a regular basis. Keep in mind, the only people that can save are the ones that do have a um, subscription to the B premium BI report. Save and share, pivot grids, bar graphs, and tables are all part of that package. Yeah. Um, just seeing what other questions we have here. Yeah, I'm just basically getting people asking for the, um, the BI report guard, guide. Uh, yeah. For those who have provided an email, um, we can definitely follow up with an email, but certainly just read it, reach out to support at functionpoint.com if you don't know who your CSM is or reach out to your CSM and um, they can definitely send you the report as well.
or Jess and I, you can reach out to us if you're our clients. Absolutely. And I'll stay on the line for a couple more minutes in case anybody has any other questions. Um, but um, yeah, and if you'll know if you have premium, somebody's asking is if when you go into the BI reports, uh, if it's there's no little uh, yellow stars next to pivot table, bar graph and line graph, that means you do have it. And if you don't and you're interested in it, um, reach out to your CSM and let them know. Um, and then it's very likely we could offer a free trial to see exactly. if it's something that you find beneficial and works for you. Um, so if, if you're somebody who's interested in learning more about that, again, reach out to your CSM or reach out to the support team and we'll put you in touch with somebody. That's awesome. Thank you, Jess. My pleasure. Thank you, Gil. And thanks for all the great questions. Um, like I said, um, I will by all means send over for those of you that I know, I will send over all the information I have. And uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me to set up a call and then we can, um, you know, get together and talk a little bit more about any expense related questions or anything else that you might need. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who took the time out to attend. Uh, we hope uh, that uh, you found this information session very helpful and um, look forward to your feedback. Have an awesome Thanks, day. Joe. Thanks, everybody. Thank Take care.